time with you talking about both sides of the equation. How can you as managers fully engage your talented people? And on the flip side, how can you as individuals, managers included, increase your job satisfaction? So I always like to start with a quote or a joke, and this is a humorist, Robin Orban, who said this. Every morning I get up and look through the Forbes list of the richest people in America. If I'm not there, I go to work. <laughs> Do you know how much it costs to lose a talented individual? Do you know what the projections are, the estimates? One to two times the person's annual salary. Nobody cares more about your career and your job satisfaction than you. Nobody cares more. If you lead others, your goal is to hang on to what you've got. And that means those talented, talented people. And we don't mean just desperately cling to them. <laughs> we mean fully engage them. We mean have them excited and pumped to come to work for you. Now, on the both sides now, on the flip side of the equation, hang on applies in a way, too, if you've got a great job. You want to hang on. But again, it's not just desperately cling to that job. It's make it everything you want it to be. And you'll see that you have room there to respond to that question. Thinking about the time and place where you stayed for a while and the question, what kept you there? What will it take to keep you? So once you get a group of talented people trained up on it, you know, those people are now worth their weight in gold. Have you noticed that? And the research showed that eight out of ten of them were stolen away, in fact, by competitors or headhunters. So this company didn't want to risk that. They wanted to put a retention program in place that was so successful that three years later, out of all the people that they had trained on SAP, only one person left. I want you to think about who's at risk. Determine the retention probability of the associates on your team. Who's at risk? Who might you lose? Find out what they want. Have that ask discussion with everybody. Find out what will keep them and what might entice them away. Design a strategy that's appropriate for each individual person. Remember that retention is an individual activity. It's not a group activity. Companies have been treating it as a group activity, and it's not. And then, of course, put it into action. Who is a jerk? I mean, we always think it's the other guy, don't we? Find a friend, find a buddy who's honest with you. And ask them, you know, if you exhibit any of these jerk-like behaviors, which I'm going to show you. <laughs> ask them to assess you. Now, by the way, if you don't have any friends at work, that's a clue for your clue bag. Now, I was working with one group of bankers. Are there any bankers in this room? Aha, uh -huh. yeah. I was working with a group of bankers, and one guy raised his hand from the back of the room, and I said, yes, yes, what? And he said, Sharon, if I asked my employees any of these questions, they'd fall over in a dead faint. <laughs> he said, I don't even say hi in the hallway. Oh. oh. And I said, you know, you might want to ease into this then. <laughs> the matures are leaving. In fact, here they left already. <laughs> you know what? The boomers are searching for meaning again. I have four Gen X kids, and my son got a new job. This was about four years ago. I called him at work, and I said, is it okay if I call you here? And there was this dead silence on the other end, and he goes, well, it better be. <laughs> he didn't even understand the question. <laughs> Don't be surprised if a Gen Y's parent calls you to complain about a poor performance review. <laughs> Who's in charge? Who's accountable? Who's responsible for employee satisfaction? Boss calls you in, sits you down, and says this to you. You matter so much to me and to this organization. I cannot imagine losing you. I probably don't tell you that often enough. So I'd like to know what will keep you here. And I'd also like to know what could entice you away. How many of you have had a boss do Almost exactly that. Turn around and look at the sea of seven hands in the room. <laughs> and by the way, that's typical. How'd it feel? Good. Okay, so one guy raised his hand. I said, how'd it feel? And he said, well, actually, Sharon, it felt a little late. It was in the exit interview. <laughs> uh, 
I said, it seems like you really like your work. And she said, oh, I do. I really love my work. And I said, well, how long have you been doing it? Okay, she's been a waitress for 15 years and she's still loving it. I said, what's the secret? And she said, well, I'm also an actress. I just don't get to do a whole lot of acting. I do much more waitressing than acting. I decided that every night could be a new debut and every table a different audience. So she blends her love of acting with her job. Now, for some of you, that can work. For some of you, it can't. Like if your favorite passion is mud wrestling or something, it's hard <laughs> to bring that to the workplace.